So, my name's Pete from Combiser, and today I want to look at carbon monoxide alarms. Now, as you know, or anyone on the gas should know, uh, new legislation means that uh, landlords need to have a carbon monoxide alarm installed from the 1st of October, I believe it was. The ones we've been sticking in are these uh, Kiddy Kid, I don't know how you pronounce it, probably Kid A or something, I don't know. Uh, these alarms, they're about 14, 15 quid each around there somewhere. Pretty good units, they're, um, yeah, they're good units, reliable brand, they're well founded and all the rest. And I've also been sent this one, which is another um, CO alarm made in China by a company called Wolf Shield. Wolf Shield, sounds reassuring. Um, so I want to just compare the two, because I think what a lot of landlords will end up doing is they'll end up going on Amazon and the like, and they'll just, um, the carbon monoxide alarm, that, that looks pretty, that'll do. But let's have a quick look at them, shall we? And how they compare. We can also test them. Now, I don't know about you, but when I do my uh, landlord safety checks, my CP12s, you go around and you kind of, you, you've got your little tick boxes, haven't you? Have they got a carbon monoxide alarm? Does it work? And what we do is we tend to just press the button and go, yes, it works. Oh, look, it's in date. That's fine then. But we're not actually testing um, the actual sensor itself when we do that. What we're testing is the, the buzzer. The buzzer, we're testing the circuit and we're testing um, the battery, basically. When we actually press the button, that's all we're testing. We're not testing the sensor itself. Similarly, with these, with anyone, if all you're doing is pressing a buzzer, uh, uh, pre pressing a button, hoping it, it buzzes at you and checking the date, then that's all you're doing. So we're actually going to test the sensor in the correct way. And we can do that with the help of some magic spray. What we do is we shove the CO alarm in a bag, we spray into the bag, it'll give a high level concentration of CO, which will hit the sensor, which will then make it buzz. Right, so good brand, good product, well used throughout the country. And then we got this one, which was a freebie sent to me just to review. This one, we open it up and it's a, it's a very, very different look to it. And straight out of the box, I mean, they're going to say this is a faulty unit. I'm absolutely convinced the manufacturers say this is a faulty unit. And it, it, it is. But where's your quality control, man? Um, straight out of the box. So I'm going to press this. Forewarning, there's going to be a lot of beeping. So I'm going to test that. It's brand new out of the box. New batteries. It's going to beep loud twice at me or three times. Huh? Once. And then it'll do its little run through and it'll go. Wah! You ready? Annoying, but it'll wake me up at night. Whereas this one, shut up. Whereas this one, um, it's got a port to be hardwired. It's got an internal battery, which apparently lasts 10 years. Um, you have to have the back on or a uh, wall plate on for it to actually work, which is a bit odd. Um, and the other thing is the size of them. I mean, this one's much slicker, isn't it? Much sexier than that. I mean, sex series, whatever. Um, by CO alarm standards, quite a sexy alarm. It's about 30 quid, which is steep in my mind, but what it is, especially when you can get a trusted brand for half the price. But about 30 quid. And what I noticed about this one, I haven't actually um, put this in the bag and tested it yet, so I'm, I'm curious. But when I press the test button on it, I don't know if you heard that or not, but it's so faint, like really, really, really faint. That ain't waking anything up. I mean, anyway, if if that's the alarm, then we're all screwed. Um, so I'm gonna pop that down, shove the box away. So what we're gonna do to test these, we are gonna shove them in a bag. I'm going to put them in the same bag. Originally, I was going to do two separate bags and spray into it, but at least we know they've got equal concentrations. I don't know how long this is going to take to go off, so this could be <laughs> this could be a silly three-hour video <laughs> waiting for this to go off. Hopefully, it ain't, because I can assure you, I'll get bored quicker than you will. we got our spray. It's a sealed bag, obviously. It's waterproof, airproof, whatever. Well, you know how these work. We're just going to press the poppers, stick them in, we're gonna spray, three seconds I'm gonna spray for. This is the, 
Who's this by? Arctic Haze, I think. Pretty sure. Um, three seconds we're going to spray for. Three. I'm going to seal the bag. Make sure it's sealed. Right. There we go. Bag sealed. Let's see what they do. Does the 30 quid one perform better than the 15 quid one? Don't know. We could be here for ages. <laughs> just, <laughs> I've done some bad videos in my time, man, but this one is just awesome. Right, I'm going to press the menu button on this, just see what it's reading. This one's got a digital display, this one hasn't. It's currently reading zero. Zero is currently reading, which is reassuring. This really could take a while. Um, right, let's stick this to one side. What I'm probably going to do is speed this up. And go, <laughs> go for a, a drink or something. Probably shouldn't drink on camera. Right. So the, the other things I want to look at in this video while I'm waffling and padding is I want to look at the placement of these as well because lots of places you go into now and they've just got a seal alarm sat on a windowsill or similar, um, which is no good for anyone. It doesn't do anything. Um, so we need to look at placement of them as well, it will make sure they're actually in the correct place to be the most efficient. And secondly, what a lot of people uh, don't know is that these will only go off on certain concentrations of CO for a, a specific amount of time. So we're going to have a quick look at that as well. So this thing will go off quite quickly if it's got 400 parts per million, say. If it's at 30, 40 parts per million, it will take a good deal longer to go off. So those two considerations we've got. I'm just going to have one more look at this before I get the urge to... So this is reading, this cheap, uh, well, this expensive black one, 230 parts per million. Hasn't gone off, but neither has the kiddie one. So let's... I'm just going to persevere for a minute, because I reckon it's going to go off in a minute. I reckon it's going to go off. So, assuming it does go off... Right, so that wall shield one, oh, so they've both gone off at pretty much exactly the same time. The only difference is, that's the kitty one. I'm gonna take the kitty one out. I'm gonna take the kitty one out. I'm just gonna whip the batteries out of them. That's gonna annoy me. Kitty one works. Now the wall shield one is actually going off. The problem is, you can't hear it. I'm gonna put it close to the camera. There you go. You kind of hear it. So annoyingly, it does work. Sort of. But there's no way that's waking you up at night. Which can only lead you to the conclusion that that's a piece of crap. Right. Well, that's that mystery solved. Um, anyway, that's how you test a CO alarm. You stick it in an enclosed environment, you put a concentration of CO in and you're away. So pressing the button doesn't do much. Um, do the cheap ones work? Well, yes and no. Well, this one didn't. I'm sure the manufacturer will say this is a faulty defective unit, um, but who cares? Where's your quality control? It did it like this, straight out of the box. First time I opened it, that was the noise it made upon test. So faulty unit. Not much consolation, though, if you're the poor sort of a faulty unit and a bad boiler, though, is it? Right, let's look at um, let's look at placement. Really important placement. Let's do that next. Bang quick video together about that, and there'll be less of this nonsense and more kind of where to shove it. Cheers. Have a good one.